Hello everyone. Welcome to Vasomatech Heal Your Heart EECP Treatment Center. Today in this video, we are going to discuss about chelation therapy. Now chelation therapy is an alternative treatment for patient with heart disease. So when compared to the traditional treatment like bypass and angioplasty, chelation therapy offer a non-surgical outpatient basis IV infusion therapy to improve the patient condition. So uh, when come to the debate or criticism, most of the interventional cardiologists or the mainstream medicine group opposes creation, uh, chelation therapy and uh, argue that it may not provide any benefit to the patient. So in this video, we are going to discuss in an unbiased way the scientific backing and literature which is supporting chelation or it is not. So when we come to chelation, the chelation proponent uh, put forward a, a theory of treating heart patient which is in contradictory to the mainstream cardiology. So the mainstream cardiology believed and they act so by fixing a vessel which has a block, a coronary so vessel block, they tend to open it by putting a stent or bypass it by using a graft which is called bypass surgery. But the chelation proponent gave a different theory at said, uh, fixing a local stenosis will not solve the problem and this problem has to be looked at in a systemic way. So they said the IV infusion which they give would cleanse the vessel, will improve the vessel compliance, will make the vessel healthier. So it is not very specific to the blockage but to the entire vasculature and this is what the chelation proponents claimed. But uh, uh, many of the studies which is done by the uh, cardiology or interventional group did show some uh, doubt whether fixing this block would re really resolve the issue. For example, trials which has done to show whether bypass surgery or angioplasty could reduce the risk of heart attack and death failed to show the benefit because study like courage, uh, ischemia trial, fame, Barry 2D failed to do so. So the chelation proponent showed this as an evidence that their uh, theory of fixing the blocks has failed and we have to go forward and accept chelation as a mainline treatment in cardiology. Now the only problem is even though there is a lot of claim, uh, the interventional or the mainstream cardiology has a lot of publications to know like which type of patient would benefit, which patient would not benefit from bypass and angioplasty. But chelation group in spite of them they are being for 50 years or almost 70 years there is no major trial done to show that chelation therapy actually works. So now what is this chelation therapy? So what this proponent claim is chelation therapy is a cocktail of multivitamin which will be infused into the patient almost for 40 weeks. So it's a long time procedure. So what does this infusion contains? So the infusion contains the most important component is disodium EDTA or disodium ethylene diamine tetraacetic acid along with that they add other vitamin like thymine, ascorbic acid, uh, heparin, uh, magnesium chloride and sodium bicarbonate and also riboflavin. So all these things they act as a cocktail to infuse into the body and what they claim is once they infused into the body this chelation or this fluid will attract the heavy metal which is present in the body. So their claim is the artery become bad because of heavy metal toxicity and which is very prevalent in 1950s when chelation started it's actually the time of industrialization so everywhere there is a heavy metal toxicity so they claim the heavy metal toxicity is an important component and once you remove this heavy metal from the blood vessel then you may able to prevent heart attack and death and stroke and uh, need for a bypass surgery and angioplasty won't be there so what are the heavy metal which is present in the body where this chelation can able to bind and remove it through urine. So for example it can able to chelate the iron, cadmium, lead and also calcium, magnesium, aluminium and all this heavy metal chelation has to shown to bind and eliminate through urine. So with this background um, the first trial of chelation to put them in a clinical perspective in 2003, the first uh, randomized trial, it means assessing chelation through a validation and a proper study. So before uh, 2003, there are a couple of studies, three to four randomized study failed to show any benefit with chelation. But that didn't uh, reduce the enthusiasm of chelationists because they thought 
the way they did the trial or the methodology is wrong so they need to do a proper trial under their guidance finally it was accepted and they initiated a trial called tact 1 which is a trial to assess chelation therapy so what they did is they took around 1700 patients and they categorized them into two groups the first group uh, will undergo this active chelation procedure with a cocktail of vitamins and the second one will go for an IV infusion but it doesn't have any of this ingredient which this chelation uh, cocktail has. So what they did is they followed this patient for 5 years. So as for a patient perspective when the patient undergo a treatment they expect certain things or, a, a, or the benefit out of the treatment. The main thing is the treatment should be able to reduce the death or reduce the chances of getting a heart attack or reduce a stroke or they should uh, reduce the chances of going for a bypass or angioplasty after chelation therapy or it should reduce the chance of getting into hospitalization for chest pain. So these were taken as a primary uh, endpoint in this trial. So what they did is they put this primary endpoint and they analyze the composite. Composite means they add up all this and they try to follow up for five years and compare these events in the patient who undergone chelation therapy and the patient who undergone a placebo procedure. Now what they found out is there is a modest benefit in chelation therapy which is a surprising finding because it, it could be considered as a breakthrough because they were able to show when you put the primary input composite all add together there is a 18% uh, reduction which is a relative risk reduction or absolute risk reduction of around 5.1%. So this is significant but the problem is when you look at the individual event for example if you specifically ask with chelation can reduce my chance of getting a heart attack the trial was negative it did not show it reduced the risk of heart attack it did not show it reduced the risk of death it did not show it reduced the risk of chance of going for a bypass or angioplasty or it did not show the any reduction in the patient getting hospitalization for chest pain so this is surprising the overall trial is mildly positive or a modest positive but individual component did not show any benefit so they tried to look at what triggers the trial to be a positive trial. They found out a specific subgroup of population where the people who are more than 50 years age who are diabetic and prior or pre previously they had a heart attack. These group of patients derived the maximum benefit from chelation therapy. So this was a surprising finding indeed. So what they did, it, they did a subgroup analysis. So the main trial was modestly positive but it could not be considered as a uh, implementation uh, driven trial. So this uh, trial uh, report cannot be taken and started doing chelation to all patients but at the same time it cannot be neglected because it is modestly positive. So the subgroup analysis they took in this subgroup of patient with diabetes greater than 50 years with a heart attack. So when they analyze the result around 600 plus patient they categorize into two group follow them up to five years they found out it is shown like that the 15 percent uh, relative risk reduction in the patient getting a chances of heart attack or death and also there is a 41 percent relative risk reduction this is very significant uh, but the problem is uh, it's a subgroup analysis it is not the main trial it is a main trials a small group of patient who undergone chelation in the main trial so this uh, the, the uh, cardiologist and the chelation proponent they come to the conclusion yes the trial is mildly positive but it is not a game changer so it could be a hypothesis generating rather than changing the guideline so they decided they should go for a final important trial to find out whether chelation could be implemented or it cannot be implemented. So this was taken care by the National Health Institute which they founded around 37 million dollars as a funding. So the TAC2 trial was initiated. Now this is very important. So prior to TAC2 trial what we assume is as I said before the blockage has to be fixed either by bypass or stent. But if this TAC2 trial become positive then it means it is not the blockage it is an accumulation of this heavy metal toxicity into the body which is a cause for heart attack and death. So this could be a game changer if the trial is positive. So what they did is it was rigorously closely monitored trial and also they want to look at the mechanism of action. It means they also in this trial want to find out whether uh, uh, chelation therapy can able to reduce the lead concentration in the body. So they took the same group of a diabetes greater than 50 years who already had a heart attack 
and fall and then they did the chelation. So, it is almost 900 plus patients was taken and they are categorized into two groups. One is chelation and the placebo group and they followed up to look at the primary endpoint which I said before it is a uh, all cause mortality or death or heart attack or a requirement for a bypass or angioplasty or a stroke or a hospitalization for chest pain. So, all these parameters are looked into it for 5 years. But unfortunately, the trial become negative because even after following 5 years, this trial did not show any difference in any of this uh, individual or composite endpoint. So, this trial concluded chelation did not reduce any of the indicator which has been put forward as a primary event. So, it did not reduce death, heart attack or requirement for bypass or angioplasty, requirement for hospitalization for chest pain or stroke. So, the negative trial in spite of this trial they have shown they were able to reduce the lead. So, the lead concentration in the body is almost 60 percent reduced by chelation. So, the chelation does reduce the heavy metal toxicity and it could be a treatment for heavy metal toxicity, but it effect on cardiovascular system is negligent or none. So, chelation as per the trial cannot be implemented as a treatment for patient with cardiac disease or ischemic heart disease.